Chiang Lai, China. A mother is distraught when she learns that her three-year-old son, Chen Shu, has fallen nearly 100 feet down this narrow water pipe. The townspeople band together more than 200 farmers strong to dig their way to the bottom of the well. But no one knows just how badly the child is hurt. Rescuers work tirelessly, desperate to reach the toddler. Finally, the digging stops. One volunteer reaches down into the well and pulls out the little boy. He's alive, but he's stopped breathing. In a frantic race to save Chen Shu, the man carrying him accidentally stumbles. But finally, the child is handed over to a team of waiting medics. Doctors quickly administer CPR, and miraculously, they revive him. But the boy is not out of danger yet. He is rushed to a hospital in critical condition. Mercifully, he pulls through. After Chen Shu's mother is reunited with her son, she is overcome with emotion. She will always be grateful to the villagers who helped save her little boy. Thomasville, North Carolina. A botched robbery at a local bank has turned into a dangerous hostage situation. Bank teller Tamara Smith has been forced at gunpoint into the holdup man's car. He threatens to shoot her as police captain Ronald Bratton approaches the vehicle. He had the bank teller sitting on his lap in the vehicle. He was underneath the steering wheel. So they were pretty well confined there. He held it into the uh, bank teller's head. Wasting no time, Captain Bratton begins to negotiate with the gunman. My objective was to keep him calm and just to, to keep him talking. The main thing I wanted to do was make sure that he didn't crank the vehicle up and try to drive off. After 90 minutes, the armed man is still threatening to kill his terrified hostage, who was wedged between him and the steering wheel. Bratton fears he has run out of options, when suddenly he sees an opportunity and makes his move. Watch again. Bratton notices that the gunman's arm is wrapped around Tamara's neck with his pistol pointing into her abdomen. Well, our concern was if I reached in and went able to grab the gun, then he could have fired the gun. Bratton knows that lunging for the weapon will also put his own life in danger. As I pulled his arm back outside the vehicle, he dropped the gun outside the car. If I wasn't successful reaching in the car, then yeah, I could be dead. When the standoff is finally over, Tamara is distraught but unharmed. Thanks to the heroic work of Captain Bratton and his fellow officers, the gunman is sentenced to prison. Florence, Oregon. The carcass of an eight-ton Pacific gray whale washes up on the beach. Normally, the remains would be hauled out to sea or buried in the sand. But these people have decided to take a different approach. Dynamite. They plan to blow the creature to bits so the tiny fragments can be consumed by seagulls and other scavengers along the shore. Blasting a whale to smithereens is a big story. So reporter Paul Lindman and a local news crew raced to the scene to cover the event. Dead on arrival, the beach near Florence. There was really kind of a carnival atmosphere there that day. Townspeople from Florence had come out. There were kids out there. I can remember people up in the dunes above the beach putting out picnics and, and getting ready to watch the show of this tremendous exploding whale. Engineers load a half ton of dynamite underneath the massive mammal, believing this will blow most of it out to sea. Moments before the detonation, Paul interviews George Thornton, 
the man behind the bizarre plan. Well, I'm confident that it'll work. The only thing is we're not sure just exactly how much uh, explosives it'll take to disintegrate this thing. So just to be sure, the engineers decide to add some more dynamite. With the explosives in place, curious onlookers are moved back a quarter of a mile from the site. Then, the command to fire. Excitement soon turns to terror as 200 pound chunks of whale meat plummet from the sky. I am conscious of a sound that I haven't heard before, and it's going thunk, 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 and it increases in speed. And I realize the sound that I am hearing is pieces of blubber hitting the ground around me. We suddenly were scared. It changed from sort of a carnival atmosphere into one of, my gosh, this is panic. <laughs> The hunks of rotten meat don't fly toward the ocean as expected. The crew used too much dynamite, causing the blubber to rain down on spectators as far as 1,500 feet away. When it ended, we were covered with that whale. 